Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody. Welcome back to our channel. It's Bienvenido been a It's been a couple weeks since we've uh what? made a video. Yeah, oh my but God. um if you're new to our channel, uh we're Gilbert and Troy. Mm -hmm. Gilbert and Troy. And we are a binational gay couple. Gilbert's from Mexico. And uh, we were married in April of 2011. So we thought um, it'd be kind of neat to go over our immigration story yes. of what we went through. Hoy vamos a hablar sobre la situación de migración, mi estatuto de migración, mm -hmm. cómo fue el proceso y todo. So, vamos a ir explicando paso a paso, pero para que tengan una idea más o menos cómo es la situación de migración. So yes, he's saying that um, our uh, situation was um, unique as all immigration um, stories are unique. They're almost like a, a separate fingerprint is the way I kind of think of them. No two stories are really exactly the same. They all have their their unique mm -hmm. um, situations that you have to deal with and go through. And um, I thought first we'd start out with some uh, like uh, myths around immigration that a lot of people don't really realize um, about our immigration system. I know before we went through it, I as an American citizen didn't know anything about what it was like to go through the immigration process. Mm -hmm. And I think you probably didn't either very much yeah. um, at all. So um, we we'll thought we'd just name a few of these myths. Um, First of all, a lot of people assume that when you marry an American that you automatically become a United States citizen, no. but that's not true. Um, just because you marry an American, you still have to go through the complete immigration process and the vetting um, to make sure there's nothing on your record and make sure your marriage is bona fide, as they say. So that is one common misconception about um, immigration that you automatically become a citizen just because you're married to somebody, and that's not true. Um, also, I've heard a lot of things and read a lot of stories recently. People say, well, they had a lot of time to get legal. You know, they've, they've been here in America for 20 years. You know, some of these stories where the, the family's been here a long time, and they've had plenty of time to get legal. Well, actually, that's not the case. There's many reasons why somebody can't even apply for citizenship. That's the next misconception. I'm going to say that it's an easy process, like going to get your driver's license or something. Sí, por lo regular el americano piensa que que como estás aquí en América y vete a la frontera y rápido vas a hacer tu proceso para que vengas y tal. No, más ellos no saben que esto es proceso largo y a veces complicado. Another misconception misconception is that it's cheap no, no. barato no es barato. it's not cheap in no. the end mm -hmm. how much did we pay por todo ya por todo por todo casi with lawyer and all the fees diez mil dollars yep ten thousand dollars ten thousand dollars for yep in our case solo por la green card yeah just for the green card this mm -hmm. isn't talking about american citizenship mm -hmm. this is permission uh, it's called a permanent resident mm -hmm. card so it's permission to remain in the united states um, so yeah, over $10,000 in our case, I don't think was like one of the extreme cases. It can, I've heard of people paying 25, 30, you know, and upwards thousands of dollars. So that puts a huge strain on so an American also, family to, in order to pay for their spouse to become legal. So that's a, a real big hurdle that I think I wish they would um, eventually take care of to not make it such a difficult um, at least application process so that, you know, a normal person like me could fill it out and send it in <laughs> without, you know, wondering if you're doing anything wrong. What were you going to say? Si tu caso es complicado, uno sabe que vas a pelear tu caso y es más dinero. Mm -hmm. Te va a costar más. If your case is harder, you si have to pay more money. Complicado. Okay, so there's two... There's really two main paths to go to citizenship. There's um, a path you can take. I'm talking about for a married couple. Mm -hmm. 
there's a path for those that um, enter what's called um, documented or with inspection is another term they use. That means you came in with a legal visa and um, you came in and, and were inspected by our immigration officers at the border. The second track are those that actually came over without inspection. And so both of those um, uh, avenues have specific rules and guidelines that you can actually follow to get your green card. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, some of them, some of the visa um, people that come in with inspection actually overstay their visas. And so even with that type of um, issue going on, the government still grants you um, a green card as long as you pass all the other inspections um, with your American citizen. Did you want to explain those two opciones coming into um, the United States? Sí, exacto. Son este, tanto puedes, uh, por ejemplo, vienes, o sea, con tu visa de trabajo o visa de turista en y te quedas aquí y ya permaneces, no regresas y te llegas a casar con un americano o una americana, tu utilización es more este, bueno, a, hace tiempo ya, pero con las situaciones cuando uno entra ilegal es, es un, no sé si ustedes saben que es más este, más estricto, más este, fuerte para las personas que tienen que salir del país y arriesgando de que no lo dejen entrar o le, o le declinen la visa o, o el, el perdón este la residencia es, es, es algo feo mm -hmm. es algo feo y duro yeah so um but another hurdle that an obstacle that we had to overcome um we got married i think i said at the beginning of the video um april um 2011, 2011. so if you remember that's before the government um, recognized gay marriage mm -hmm. in the United States. So when we got married, we, we did travel to Iowa and got married where it was legal in that particular state because Indiana had not become legal yet. We knew that that wasn't going to be sufficient enough to sponsor him as a green for his green card. We had to overcome that obstacle of the gay marriage issue. And we really, back then, we could not see... A path forward mm -hmm. of how we were going to do that. We we really were kind of nervous going forward of what we were going to have to do. You know, would I have to leave America just to be able to stay with my husband? You know, so we didn't know what was going to happen. So obviously, when June 26, 2013 came about, that's when the Supreme Court um, actually made it legal uh, na on a national level for us, for me to be able to sponsor my husband for um, immigration purposes. So of course, we were just like thrilled. So we, um, of course, wanted to contact a lawyer pretty close to that. I mean, it didn't take, we didn't wait too long to start our process. And we'd already been married, what, three, three years by the time we started? In sí. nos, 2014. Nos conocimos en Julio. 28 del 2009 él y yo nos conocimos y empezamos a salir y en el 2000 en el 2011 okay. nos casamos uh -huh. después que ya teníamos que tres años de casado creo uh -huh. before we started the process eh, se hizo la suprema corte para 2013 en el 2013 se hizo legal entre un, entre el matrimonio de un hombre y una mujer y eso a partir de ahí empezamos a este a, a, a ver mi situación de inmigración. Empezamos a buscar abogado, empezamos a, a consultar y eso, a movernos rápido porque este pues uno no sabía, a veces cambia de repente que esto y el otro y, y, yeah. y fuimos paso a paso. Mm -hmm. So after um, of course the decision was made by the Supreme Court we remembered seeing ads for a place called Immigration Equality, mm -hmm. and um, we sent an email to them, and uh, you can look them up if you ever in this situation. Even now, they still work with um, especially um, LGBT uh, 
couples mm-hmm. to help them with their um, immigration uh, situations. So they gave us the name of a lawyer locally here in the Indianapolis area. And it just so happened that he was gay himself and that he was an immigration lawyer. So it was a perfect match. So we started the process, I believe, April of 2014. And um, he had to have an FBI background check to start with. And um, we actually submitted our green card application. I'm looking at my notes. I remember the dates. Um, August 5th of 2014. At that time, we paid the application fee of $1,070. I have that in my notes here. And then I had to also pay as the petitioner for an alien relative another $420. So then we, we did the, what's called the I-485, which was the application to register a permanent resident or adjust status, which is what he had to do, adjust his status. Then we filed what's called an I-765, which was an application for his employment authorization so he could work. We did a I-131, which is an application for travel document. Not that we had plans to travel, but just in case the lawyer said it's good to have that in case an emergency would rise, that they would grant you permission to travel. Hmm. And then I, uh, the last one was an I-130 which is the actual petition for the alien relative, which is in, in my name that I had to do. Along with that, there's all kinds of other documents you got to produce, like where I work, make sure I have enough money to support somebody. you got to have a certain level of income in order to actually tell, prove to them that you can support your spouse or the relative that you're um, um, sponsoring. Yeah, el 4 de noviembre fue el aviso de la entrevista. Right, so he said mm-hmm. on November 4th mm-hmm. of 2014, we did get our, the um, notice for his green card mm-hmm. interview, which is the thing that you're waiting for. You know, it's like the big thing. So, and then November 6th, just a couple days later, we got his uh, work permit card. Mm-hmm. So from that time forward, he could actually start working legally in the United States. So um, that was exciting to get that. So his interview was scheduled for um, December 9th of 2014. Mm -hmm. And so that's the next kind of thing on the timeline. In December 9th, we had to go to the immigration office in Indianapolis and have our interview together. So, you know, your lawyer prepares you for that Mm -hmm. and make sure that you um, pretty much have to know all the, um, the same questions that are on your application. Sí, el, el 9 de diciembre del 2014, del 6 de noviembre, el, del, perdón, del 4 de noviembre, el 14 fue entrevista la tarjeta verde. El 6 de noviembre del mismo año, bueno, sí, lógico, eh, me llegó mi permiso de trabajo y mi, mi tarjeta otra de trabajo. Uh-huh. Y um, fue aprobación verbal. Uh, el... La fecha inicia de, para, para la residencia fue el 20 de febrero de 2015. Que la carta ya estaba, ya estaba aprobada y todo, ya todo. Ya. En, eh, fue recibida mi, mi petición y todo, ya listo todo. El 28 de febrero de 2015 llegó mi tarjeta verde, o sea, la residencia. So we had the interview which actually probably was like 20 to 30 minutes long. And um, that day, we pretty much got a verbal approval. Mm -hmm. And so um, that became his um, actual permanent resident start date of December 9th. So then um, on February 20th, so we waited till February, uh, we'd got his green card permanent resident approval letter in the mail. So that kind of makes it, you know, super official. And also the um, petition for the alien relative approval letter, which would have gone to me as the um, sponsor. And then on February 28th, he got the actual card in the mail. And I'll, I'll put some video up, up on the screen of him opening it up. But that was a great day, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, something that we thought would never, um, it was like an insurmountable obstacle, of course, being gay. And then when the law changed, it allowed us to do it. I mean, it just, everything has fallen in line to help us be together to be the couple that we want to be, the married couple that we want to be. So, um, anyway, yeah, it was very exciting, as he said in Spanish as well. So then you, it fast forward then a couple years later, if you are a married couple for three years three before years. you can, or after you get your green card, you have to wait for three years and then you can start the process to become an American citizen. Mm -hmm. So because I looked that up online, it didn't seem as challenging, um, as difficult to fill out. Um, as it did for the green card, so I just we decided to do that on our on our own. Yeah. The application isn't nearly as um, difficult to figure out, and all this stuff is online that you can look up on the website on their website and get all the documents you need to fill out and everything to send in. Yeah, but we pay uh, al almost eight hundred dollars for that. Yes, yeah, so for the citizen application. Mm -hmm. You have to send in then another seven hundred twenty-five dollars, or at least the time we um, submitted his application, September of two thousand seventeen, mm -hmm. for that. But then the other challenging part of the citizenship part is the um, green card holder needs to um, learn all of the history questions. There's a hundred um, history and um, political science questions on a test that they have to take and there's a hundred that they have to learn and they think they only ask you 10 yeah. at the interview yeah. but you still have to learn them all and so and it's all in English so if, mm -hmm. if you're not super good at English that's going to be a little bit more challenging to learn all those questions and answers so what we did was I recorded them all on an audio file and he would listen to them every day to and from work like yeah, 20 at a, day, 20 like at a time a, like a one song and i learned a lot yeah. too going every through day. those questions i mean or you know refreshed my memory of stuff that i learned back when i was a kid that si lo pasa uno eh, cuando te quieres hacer ciudadano americano uh, dice uno no no puede si sí se puede you eh, can do it se puede y, y estudias estudia y te va las cien palabras se te van y respuestas se te van quedando y, y este y lo pasas porque nada más son diez preguntas con diez preguntas las contest, contestas seis y contestando seis preguntas y ellos paran uh, también de leer les no creas que van a leer que tengan miedo oh, me van a poner un pedazote de no no un, es un párrafo nada más es algo que te pregunta quién fue el presidente, el primer presidente de los Estados Unidos, o dónde está el Estatua de la Libertad, o escribir también, no, no tengan miedo, de yeah. que te escrito es nada más, te ponen, a ver, este, cómo, pone esto, uh, quién fue fulano de tal, o bla, 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 y... You also have to be able to write mm -hmm. um, English and read English a little bit. They, I think they give you two sentences to write. Yeah. And then from dictation, and then you have to read two sentences back to them in English. So, I mean, not too challenging, but for those that might not be super good in, in English, it can be a mm. very um, daunting task to pass that test. Um, but anyway, so we sent in this application September 13th of 2017, or 15th, I'm sorry, September 15th of 2017. And then... In, on October 10th, he had to go for his um, biometric appointment where they take your fingerprints, pretty much is all they do there. It's a quick in and out. Otra vez. Yep, another. That's the same thing they did for the green card, but then they got to do it again for the citizenship thing. So, um, and then on December 18th is when he had his scheduled um citizenship interview where he had to do the test and um, take all the documents that he needed that's listed on their website that you can find out of what you've got to take and make sure that they're mm -hmm. provided with at the at the interview yeah. and how did you do on the test 
You got all of them right, 100% correct. Seis preguntas. Seis preguntas. Yep. Listo. He got it all right. He was, he was ready. Even the writing and the reading, he did just fine on. They can ask for a book. They'll give you a book. And mm -hmm. then you can also find all of the um, study preparation materials on their website. So they didn't tell us that particular day that, you know, he was official and passed, you know, whatever. But we were pretty sure that he had done, there's nothing else left to do except get that um, passport photo. So then uh, we waited, um, that was December 18th, then a, almost a month later, January 11th, 2018, we actually got the notice for his oath ceremony in the mail, which is, you know, excellent, exciting news. Yeah. And that was going to be February 1st of 2018. That was so exciting to go to on February 1st. It's just pretty much just going and um, listening to a lot of speakers. And then you take your oath, you know, to become a United States citizen. They take your green card away and then they give you your naturalization certificate. Mm -hmm. So that was a an exciting day. That was it? exciting. Yeah. Por eso todos aquellos que tengan su residencia, háganse ciudadano americano. No importa, si no tenga miedo, no pasa nada, están más seguros. Y otra cosa, y al final, eso también tengan, ya les vuelvo a repetir, uh, vean cuando si pasan su examen, vean que todo esté bien, vean que su nombre esté bien, que si alguna letra, todo, porque después de eso, si comete un error, lo puedes uh, componer, pero te cuesta muy caro. Por ejemplo, el mío. Okay, so he's, what he's saying is, after you take your test, he's trying to, to tell folks that make sure that they give you a paper to check over your name that's going to be on your certificate, which is going to be your official name. And we chose to change his name, actually, from what it was before to his name is actually, his last name is Bond, the same as mine. So he chose to do that. Um, and they give you that court order to look over and make sure all the spellings are correct and everything. And then you sign it off, you know, with to make it all legal. And they take it to the court for you on your behalf. And... Mi error nada más fue, el mío es, por ejemplo, mi nombre es Gilberto. Pero en, en, en el papel decía Gilbert. Sí. Yeah, so his, no his... le puso la O. His Entonces first names, no me di cuenta y firmé y todo y ya cuando llegó la ceremonia todo mi diploma y todo veo que el el juez me Gilbert dice Gilbert pues yo pensé lo que es América sí le gusta Gilbert Gilberto me entiende no va la O pero cuando me vive en certificado dije oh no aquí hay un error yeah so his his he's saying that his first name is um, actually Gilberto, Gilberto, yeah, with an O on the end. And when he was at checking over his paper, he didn't notice that they had dropped the O. Mm -hmm. And so on the form, when he got a certificate that day, I'm like, oh, they spelled your name wrong. It says Gilbert. And so we were like, oh, man, they made a typo. And we didn't get to tell anybody that day. So we went, made an appointment to go back to the immigration office and speak to the the. Um, people in the front desk and she said no she said um he signed that yeah. court document Related saying that he looked it time. over mm -hmm. and even though we typed it gilbert mm -hmm. um it's his fault for not catching it and having exactly. it and having La culpa it redone. Es de uno, no es de ello por no leer bien. and in order yeah. to fix it she mm -hmm. said you'd have to pay like 500 dollars to go back to court si, si necesitabas componerlo tenías que pagar 500 dollars y todavía ir a la corte y dije, no, mejor así That's que... That's kind of an expensive igual. O. Por la O no voy a pagar. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, Gilbert yeah. is a very um, easy na easier name to pronounce than Heberto. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we still call him Heberto. Gilberto. That's Gilberto. Yeah. So, um, just be sure you double check that document when, if you're going through that, too. So, we got his social security card after that changed mm -hmm. over to his correct, or his new name um, that he got on his certificate. And then he applied for his passport pretty quickly after that. I think, let me see the date on that, um, February 16th. So about 15 days later, we applied for his American passport. And that came about a week. Mm. Right. 
you know, like a week. So that's like the whole story. Um, so from from. Si quieren viajar luego luego salir fuera de cuando se hagan ciudadano saquen su pasaporte. Sí, su pasaporte. Yeah, you gotta get your passport right away so then you can travel mm -hmm. um, as an American citizen. Mm -hmm. So quick review for his green card. We started April eighteenth, two thousand fourteen. And he actually got his green card in his hand. Um, when was it? February 28th, 2015. So just shy um, two months. So I'd say about, um, what, 10 months it took mm -hmm. for you to get your green card, the, pro, the whole process. It seemed like a long time. And there again, it can be differing times for differing, different people. You know, the cases don't always go that way. The offices sometimes are more busy depending on what part of the country you're in. And so our office, um, it took a, took them about 10 months to get the, the permanent resident card. And then for the citizenship, we applied on September 15th, 2017. And he became a citizen on February 1st, 1st 2018. So that was even quicker to do that. What was that? September, October, November, December? Five months. Five months. Yeah, less than six months to do Muy that. Muy rápido. Yeah. Rápido proceso. So, I know we've talked a lot. Yo ahora soy um, American um, citizen. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting. We've talked a lot. This is a, a kind of a, a wordy video that we've done, but we thought it would be helpful to some people to understand. Ahora voy a pagar más taxes. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> taxes, 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 taxes. 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 But we hope you were able to learn a little bit about um, the immigration process mm -hmm. and what our story was to get there. It's um, Like I said, for gay couples, it was um, a little nerve-wracking in the beginning to not know what we were going to do. But um, we made it, and everything just fell together perfectly. So wouldn't change any of it. So glad that we're together. Right, baby? So if you have any questions or um, comments, please leave them down below. If you're not a subscriber, we would love to have you as a subscriber to our channel. And um, hit that like button and share if you would. If you know of anybody else going through um, the immigration process, maybe they can learn a little bit about the process sí, si and our story. Al, algún comentario que quieran hacer sobre esto, no olviden el, uh, escribir abajo, piquen a la campanita y si son nuevos, suscríbanse. Y para que reciban notificaciones nuevas No hacemos mucho, pero pues sí vamos ahí Intentando hacer más y más para ustedes también Gracias por vernos Y buenas noches See you next time, thanks for watching guys Nos vemos después Buenas Adiós. noches, adiós